Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I want to thank you for being here today and welcome you. Um, please call me Jean. Uh, and what may I call you? I'm Sally. Sally, and I know you're attorney. Hello, Paul. Nice to have you back again. And you are? I'm Harry. Harry. Good to meet you, Harry. Thank and you. is it okay if we call you Harry? It is. And, of course, I know you're attorney as well. Hello, Dan. How are thank you, you today? Uh, I want to uh, welcome you and, and make you feel as comfortable as possible. We have water on the table. There's coffee and tea over here on the sideboard if you need it. The restroom's around the hall on the left, so at any time if you need a break, just let me know and we'll certainly accommodate that. And while we're talking about that, does anybody have any special needs? Medication you have to take at a certain time or time restraints? No. Very, if, you, if there are, let me know because we'll certainly be able to accommodate you. Uh, I think you've made a really good choice to come to mediation today. I understand that the two of you have a son, Billy, and I'm sure that Billy is important to each of you. And being able to do this here in a private um, way, a confidential way, will certainly take a lot of the pressure off of your son. So you've made a wise choice to be in mediation. The um, courts are over docked docketed, as you know, and you may have to wait months before you get heard. And then uh, the judge is only going to be able to give you a day or a portion of a week to do it. And the things that you'd like to have said, you may not be able to say because of the rules of evidence. But in here, the each, each of you can say everything you need to say, and you can be heard. And I think that's very important because I'm sure with the, uh, the preparation for the trial, you probably haven't had an opportunity to hear each other. And that's my role. My role is to guide you and help you hear each other and communicate, help you explore all the options possible to work out the remaining issues and come to a resolution that will fit you, uh, Harry, and you, Sally, and uh, most of all, your son, Billy. So again, congratulations for this choice. My credentials are that I'm a Rule 31 mediator uh, approved by the Tennessee Supreme Court. I am a mediation trainer and I have been a mediator since 1992. I'm also a lawyer, but I will not be wearing my lawyer hat today. You have very fine counsel uh, to uh, do that for you today. And at any time that your lawyer needs to talk to you or you need to talk to your lawyer, feel free to let me know and, and we'll arrange that. Uh, by the same token, if you would like to talk to me alone in a private session, we can arrange that, and whatever you tell me there will also be confidential. The, um, there are several rules that make this work better. As I mentioned, it's confidential. So um, nothing that is said in here can be used against you in court, nor can anyone subpoena me to go to court to testify. Let me ask you if the two of you as well would like to keep this confidential. Yes. Yes. Very good. So we already have our first agreement. The second uh, rule is that it's, we would ask for your full honesty and disclosure of anything that might help us resolve this case. And you'll agree to that as well. Certainly. All right. Thank you. The third agreement is uh, voluntary. We uh, may be here under a court order but the decisions that you make will be your own. No one can coerce you, not neither your attorney nor I nor anyone else. It's going to be your voluntary decision. So the two of you will be the decision makers. Uh, but if at any time you feel that you would like to leave this process, that is your choice. You may do so. I would just ask you a favor. Will you agree to stop and speak with me in a private session first to see if there's some way we can put this back together? because I think you'd be leaving a very valuable process. Would you agree to do that? Sure. And, and would you? All right. And then the last one is mutual respect. We've already agreed to talk to each other about using first names. Um, I would like to ask that you speak only from your own perspective rather than tell me what Harry thinks or what he's up to. Uh, just tell me what's important to you, what you need. And rather than telling me what her motivation is, Tell me what you'd like to see happen in the future. Uh, I also ask you to be open-ended and flexible, uh, open-minded and flexible. Um, your attorneys are going to have a little different role today than they have in court. I'm sure you hire them because they're uh, aggressive attorneys who will do a good job for you in court. But this is not an adversarial process. 
So we're going to ask them to do something that lawyers aren't very good at, and that's be quiet. And if any time, though, that you need to talk with them, you may do so. But the two of you are going to be doing the talking today. So is everybody good on that? Sure. All right. Let's go. Um, let me explain a little bit about the four steps. We're almost through the introductory step, the introduction. The second piece, I'll be hearing from each of you about what's important to you today, what your goals and concerns are, and what you'd like to achieve at the end of the day. Then we will throw up as many options as we can think of on this chart, and maybe the ones that you haven't even thought of before. And there are no bad ones, we'll put the good ones, the bad ones, whatever. And out of that we'll find ones that will work for you, and we'll write them up and that'll be the fourth step. And you'll have an agreement that your attorneys can review, you can sign off on, and you'll be done. It'll be over. So are you good to go? Yes. And how about you? Yes. Well, if that's so, let's uh, pass this agreement to mediate around. And where are we going? So, Harry, um, you are concerned about whether or not Sally can afford the house. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, sure. I've always been the one that, that earned the income. She works, but her income doesn't justify a home like we live in. And her comment that she'd like to keep the home and have a suitable home for Billy really is impractical. She knows she can't make enough, even with the child support, to sustain that house without having to go get another job or something. And, and if she does that, who watches Billy? I Don't do you? agree that it would be very hard. Mm -hmm. and that I would need a higher paying job. Um, I, I hope that I might be a little more qualified than, um, than, than we, Harry gives than you credit we, for. Yes. Well, we have a lot of equity in that house, but it still has a substantial mortgage on it, and the payments have to be made. And I don't want to lose that house because she gets it in the divorce settlement and then can't afford the mortgage payments, and she gets behind and who's going to save the house? She'll come running to me. So one of your solutions is either to get a better job or a second job. Do you have any ideas for making this economically feasible? Other than selling the house, you mean? Okay, so selling the house would be uh, your choice, selling the house and dividing the uh, equity. And then we could both have a, a nice home. So option five would be to delay for a uh, period of time paying him his portion. Mm -hmm. And I know that would seem hard. Also. So what could you do with this proposal that might make it more palatable to him? Can you think of something that might make him willing to delay? Put our heads together and see if we can think outside the box and come up with some kind of an answer. I wonder, uh, Billy is 13, I understand, so right. he has five more years of minority. Um, anything to do with that? Well, the desire that we're talking about is that Billy would have a nice home with her and a nice home with me. And Congratulations, Harry and Sally. We've reached a complete agreement on all the issues, and uh, it seems like an agreement that you both can live with and feel good about. And let's review it, and I have written it out here um, that you can follow on our, uh, the flip chart that we've done. Um, you've already agreed on the co-parenting time and the child support before you came. Uh, today, we've agreed that each of you will pay half of the mortgage for the next eight months to give Sally time to get into this new job that she believes that she'll have. She will attempt to refinance the house within that eight months, but if she's unable to do so, uh, she's agreed to sell the house and attempt to find another house in the same school district so she can accomplish it. So is that the totality of your agreement? That sounds right. And you're both be willing to be bound by it? Yes. All right, I have written that out here, and I will pass it around for everybody to sign, and we'll be done. And then your attorneys will take this memorandum of understanding and put it in legalese and, uh, and present it to the court for the court signature, and everything will be finished. 
So, again, congratulations. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate what you did today. You're welcome. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Jim. And thank you, Paul.